I hope you're enjoying the brand new image. If you hadn't noticed already, we managed to buy a camera this week. So nice manifesting, everyone. Some of you who know me will um, might laugh at this because <laughs> everyone knows that I have not the best vibration relative to technology. So let's hope this image turns out as good as I hope it will. Today we're going to speak to the brain. What we're going to speak to the brain about is Akashic Records. The Akashic Records are a symbolic representation that the brain uses to represent the fact that every thought which has ever been thought exists. The Akashic Record is the collective consciousness. It has been referred to as the mind of God, which as such happens to contain the information or the energetic vibration of every thought which has ever been thought in any and all universes that have ever been since the first division of oneness or source. It also contains a bit of future. What I mean by it contains a bit of future is from where you stand right now you have paths of probability which extend past your lifetime. <coughs> The future is always a vibrational match to the present, and so if you change a thought in the present, the future paths change. So what exists in the Akashic Record relative to the future is just probabilities which stem from your current vibration right where you stand in your life at this very moment. When we in human consciousness often think of, of this storage of thoughts, we associate it with a library because that is what we in our human lifespans see as a collection of information. So often when people visit these nonlinear dimensions, um, the experience of being there is being pulled into linear understanding. So that which is nonlinear is being formatted in a linear way by the brain when you come back into third dimensional reality. So it's a, it's a linear understanding upon re-entry into third dimensional consciousness. And the entire experience is interpreted as sorting through records or images. So an image library of sorts. As some of you may have noticed, you can't get experts in any field to agree. I'm going to do a video on this later, what to do when no one can agree. But I'm going to present to you some information which has never before been said about the Akashic Records because I'm not one of those who agrees with many of the experts as far as the Akashic Records in the relation to interdimensionality is concerned. Conceptualizing of dimensions is something that the brain is concerned with. It's not something that the spirit is concerned with. But for the sake of the brain and explaining um, Akashic Records, it's behoove of us to go into the understanding of dimensions. As I've said before, dimensions are divided in terms of vibration. They're not a spatial concept. It's our brain which is meant to deal with space and time, meant to format wave function into space and time, that is really telling us that their dimensions are existing anywhere other than in the now. In reality, all dimensions exist on top of one another, in the same space. They're just different vibrations overlapped one on the other. So you are existing on all dimensions at all times. In my opinion, the Akashic Records don't represent one dimension. That's what many people say. There's a, usually a consensus that the re uh, Akashic Records exist on the fifth dimensional, or um, this kind of thing. but. I don't think information is stored on one dimension or another dimension. So the the way that it really works is that information is stored on the dimension which it corresponds to. So you could think of the entire Akashic record as a giant library. And let's say this library is source. Even though right now as you're thinking about a library, you're probably thinking about a building. That's because the brain can't understand the concept of no beginning and no end, and it can't understand the concept of no borders. But if we're going to talk about, <laughs> about the Akashic Records appropriately, we've got to give the brain something to latch onto. So let's call source the library. That's the ultimate dimension. 
all the dimensions within this library could be seen as different levels within a library, just like when you go to a the library there's floor one, floor two, floor three. The different dimensions could be seen as these levels in the library. And there's different information relative to each level. So, each successive floor in this library is more expansive than the floor below it. So each successive floor contains all the information in the floors below it, including new information relative to the expansion or the expansive totality of, of unity consciousness. Accessing the Akashic Records has to do with you increasing your vibratory rate at, so as to be a match to one floor and then the next floor and then the next floor and so on. All right, I'm going to give you an example. In the fourth dimension, which is the one just outside the third dimension, we have access to every thought which has ever been thought relative to this single lifetime from your birth to your death. It also contains your thought form, which is basically the energetic self-concept you have of you, which is why when you get out of body in the fourth dimension, you will experience your energy body, which is an energy duplicate. It is an energetic duplicate of the third dimension, but it contains, the fourth dimension contains, every thought which has ever been thought relative to your one lifespan. This third dimension is moment to moment. So even though we, our brains can conceptualize of the fourth dimension, um, that's why we have any concept of time. But the third dimensional reality is a moment to moment reality, meaning that all that exists is now and now and now. In the fifth dimension, every possible timeline from the single point that you've chosen for your third dimensional life exists. The symbology I like to explain with this is if any of you have seen the movie Sliding Doors, um, in the movie the woman experienced missing a train. So the movie takes off on two different probability paths. In one probability path she makes this train and her life changes accordingly. And in the other one she misses the train and then her life continues along this path accordingly. So in the fifth dimension, you have all of the timelines which are possible for this single path which you've chosen from any point in your life. So that means not just from where you stand right now, but also all the probability paths which exist since you were born. As you can imagine, this is, this is such a huge totality of information that the third dimensional brain has absolutely no way of formatting this for you in an understandable way. So, within the timeline from your one birth to your one death, the fifth dimension contains all possibilities within that one path. You are collapsing the waves of probability in the fifth dimension into a fourth dimensional timeline. That is what you are doing to form your concept of your one life and the, and the one path which has been taken by you in your physical life. In the sixth dimension, you are unlimited by space and by time. And so you can instantly experience a new timeline within that fifth dimension from any of the probabilities in the fifth dimension. So instantly you could switch to the outcome of what would have occurred if something back in your infancy had been totally radically changed. So if one of the probability paths that you didn't end up taking from a point, say, which in which you were six months old, um, you could chase that all the way to the end and instantly experience the end result of that particular probability path. In the seventh dimension, the sixth dimension is treated almost like a single point. So there is no timeline anymore. The sixth dimension is one point where all possibilities in terms of timelines in our universe and all possible endings for our universe are contained. They are contained in the single point called infinity. So all possible timelines which could have or will have occurred since the birth of this universe, since the Big Bang, are contained in the seventh dimension.
So every thought that's ever been thought relative to this universe is contained in the seventh dimension. So it might be at this point where you'll be asking, how can there be more than infinity? <laughs> the answer is there can be other infinities. Other universes created under different conditions, and when other universes are created under different conditions, there are different laws which apply to that universe. So different laws, laws other than the law of gravity. So in these other universes and other infinities, the laws are not the same. The basic laws are not the same because the initial conditions creating those universes also aren't the same. So in the eighth dimension, that's where you begin to have access to the infinity relative to this lifetime of this universe as it relates to the infinity of another universe or other universes. In the ninth dimension, you have access to being able to instantly experience any probability path from any timeline of being in any universe instantaneously. So when you're entering the 10th dimension, many of us like to refer to the 10th dimension as the most expansive level of the library. So this is the top level. What you're going to be experiencing with the 10th dimension is all probabilities of all universes in the ninth dimension. And all of those probabilities of all the universes in the ninth dimension are treated now as a single point. So we could go even further than that. When you go even further than that, you kind of have the walls of these library, which aren't walls at all. So instead of being the levels within the library, we're now the library itself. Difficult for the third dimensional mind to conceive of, I understand, but when we're outside the 10th dimension beyond, you're entering the zero point field. So in the 10th dimension, all universes from the 9th dimension are treated as a single point. And in the 10th dimension, past the 10th dimension, you don't even have a point. What you have is, is this zero point field, which is a sea of probability waves, which we would call source. That is the totality of collective consciousness not the expressions of that consciousness. So it's important to understand that when we're exploring Akashic Records, um, most people are referring to a seventh dimensional experience. That is the frequencies of where past lives exist. So, so that would be the totality of probabilities which have occurred for one soul from its origin in this universe to its end in this universe. So it exists as sort of an energy record, a seventh dimensional energy record. So when, when most people are referring to, to this um, Akashic record, they're talking about a seventh dimensional experience. But I think it's more important to understand that when we're talking about the Akashic record, it contains much more than this. That's just one level of the library which you're going to. And if you're interested in past lives, um, the librarian, whoever that would be, would say go to the seventh floor, the seventh dimension. Like anything, you're limited by your beliefs, most especially when we're talking about the Akashic Record, because you access information in the Akashic Record, or these energetic frequencies, by becoming a match to those frequencies first. So you have to, A, believe that they exist. B, you have to believe that you can get there. C, you have to structure all of your belief patterns so as to let go of third dimensional reality in order to be a match to the Akashic Record. <clears throat> so this is the same way as saying you're limited not only by your beliefs when it comes to experiencing the Akashic Records, but you're also limited relative to your beliefs according to what information you draw out of or are a match to in the Akashic Records. So those people who raise their frequencies higher and higher or match to higher levels of the library. All of this being said, any of you can access the Akashic Records. It is a natural byproduct of raising your frequency, which is what all of us in the spiritual world are harping on. The more that you clear up your um, darker aspects, the more you do your shadow work, the more you face in the direction of what feels good, the more you're going to be a match to more and more information relative to the Akashic Records. I understand that it might be really hard to 
to conceptualize of dimensions because your brain is a tool which is meant to be an interface for the third dimension only. But it is my promise that the more meditations you do and the more out-of-body work that you do, the more you will understand this concept of your own frequency being a match to the interdimensionality of this universe. And Akashic Records will become an experience for you other than a con rather than a concept, which is what we're really looking for. Because once it becomes an experience for you, this information will be very real, and then you can access all information which has ever been known, and all thoughts which have ever been thought, throughout the beginning of all universes, within the totality of this mass consciousness which is Source. In the future, if any of you are interested, I um, was thinking about doing a video on how to access the Akashic Records, because there are some interesting tools which you can use out there if what you're really after is being able to garner knowledge from these dimensions, access the Akashic Record, in other words. So if any of you would like to see that kind of a video, feel free to go ahead and tell me. And I will see you next week. <laughs>